Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This time we have a comment from Yorana and she says, Do you think the high levels of creativity are in it or they can be developed? I ask because sometimes I deal with people who seem hopelessly incapable of thinking outside the box, even to solve the smallest problems. And on the other hand, I'm humbled by people who come up with creative ideas that are mind-blowing to me and I would never consider myself capable of. What's your take on the specific asset? You already spoke about the topic of talent, but creativity is something broader that involves all so practical aspects of life, not just art. Thank you, Rana. First of all, I'd like to say that art can be very practical, but our modern nihilistic society might have misconceived it or conceptualized it as something useless or non-practical. I will elaborate more about this later. But for now, as you said, and I agree with you, creativity does not necessarily have to do with art. We are used to it when we are in the kindergarten, when a child paints something that looks good, the mother likes to say, my child is creative. So on one hand, we associate creativity with painting or with art. On the other hand, we associate it with something very subjective. Who decide what is creative? It becomes like a compliment that family members and friends give to each other. But here's the thing, even when a person makes the most quote-unquote uncreative thing, yet he or she have created something that was not there before. So regardless of the quality of the creation, it has a creator. So in the general meaning, anyone who creates something that was not there before had to go through a creative process in order to create that specific creation. And by this definition, everyone has traits of creativity. And here starts the debate. Since all of us are creators of something, or have the potential of creating something, what can measure the level of the creativity as you mentioned it? And here we'll be talking about the quality of the creation. The quality that indicates the depth of the consciousness of its creator. His or her vision, his or her skills, and this quality is measured by its efficiency and precision, fulfilling its purpose, and to be able to conceive the purpose. A woman cannot give birth without the ability to conceive. One needs to be conscious of the purpose. So, a person or a society who lives without purpose might have difficulties with creativity. Those who don't know what they want, who they are, what they're doing, why they are doing what they are doing, those might have difficulties with creativity, even if they were artists. Come to Berlin and see the amount of meaningless art and purposeless art and ask the artist, what is your purpose from this work? And they would mock you for asking this question. They're just happy to be financed by the government, to put out meaningless objects in order to say we spend the tax money on art while well, they are just channeling it to their nihilistic friends and family in the name of art and culture. There's a lot of confusion. You see someone who's far from being creative, but he or she lives a lifestyle only from their bureaucratic art. And we start to take those seriously and use them as a reference. Those are not references. They are part of a scheme much more bigger and sinister than we think. And almost everyone is part of it. On the other hand, a military that is very conscious of the values of life and death, and aware of its needs and goals, and the necessity to survive and guard their dignity and values, such military will create creative technologies that serve their objectives and fulfill their purpose. So today we see militaries inventing more innovative and creative technologies, bureaucrats inventing creative and innovative AI technologies and methods to tighten the control over the population. Big tech and big pharma get very creative with their marketing methods. But on the other hand, you see useless artists that build art or artworks that make serious effort not to serve any purpose. And if it does serve a purpose, it would be the purpose of their sponsor, who is normally the government or big pharma and co. So everyone is becoming more innovative with their industries. Only artists are still begging for the bureaucrats to give them a job on TV or to hang their paintings in galleries. This only shows that they don't know what their purpose is, why they are useful in the first place. Governments use performers and actors for their propaganda machines because they understand the significance of their message, how significant, how they should communicate it with high efficiency and high precision. But Actors and artists behave as, as if they were useless without a government to give them a job. And the only way their purpose can be fulfilled is when the TV bureaucrat hires them. I mean, like 
20 years ago, a musician who got famous thanks to his inspiring poetry and emotional music and sovereign performance, people used to buy tickets, expensive tickets, in order to attend his concert. A good film made profit where people actually went physically to the cinema in order to watch it. And they bought tickets, expensive tickets. So the quality of the piece of art was measured by how many people bought tickets. Not how many politicians or sponsors pay for the production and then they kill the film in the archives, but how many normal people attended and kept on buying the DVD and keep watching it on film apps. Nowadays, most concerts are financed by governmental support or by commercial sponsors or advertisers. So artists don't need to be creative in order to attract the people who want to consume their art. They just need to do what the bureaucrats tell them to do. The bureaucrat here becomes the creative author who comes up with the idea and the message, who has the purpose, who is aware of the purpose, and the artist becomes merely a robotic performer, a technician to execute and build the process technically. I know that many would love to think they are highly creative because this society makes everyone feel special. But this is not the case because creativity has to do with survival first. Those who live without survival challenges cannot develop the wisdom that creates solutions for those challenges. Challenges can be anything that moves people into action to solve a problem. Someone who has not experienced challenges, how can they develop the skills that are necessary to solve problems? About five years ago, I was contacted by a journalist who worked on mainstream media and who aspired to be a filmmaker, a film producer. He and his wife wanted to get out of their rat race and to create a production company as a private business. And they told me they liked my business model and my lifestyle as a sovereign artist, and they would like to collaborate so I can help them become independent as well. So the moment I explained to them the process and how things are done, the guy said to me, yes, but where should the money come from to finance all that? So I explained again. We invest our resources, we create the product, we market it, and we sell it. He asked again, yeah, but where should the production money come from? As if there's a blockage between us because He's used to get paid by TV and he cannot conceive what it means to have a direct relationship with the audience and with potential consumers and with viewers and what it means that I invest my own money in my project and leverage that investment. I mean, already when I was 13, I could wash someone's car and get paid for it. After that, I take that money and buy corn in the weekend. I boil it early in the morning and fill the corn in two buckets. I take the newspapers in order to wrap the orders and go out to sell it. The revenue that I make will be divided. Some of it I use in order to buy books and for pocket money. And the other part I use in order to buy another round of corn and do the same thing the next week. So this 13 years old child didn't ask where the money should come from in order for me to finance my project. But this well-dressed adult Western journalist calls himself creative and asks me where the money should come from. So I said to him, you told me that you're a creative person, but what kind of creative is that when I need to give you all the answers right now, without you already try something, without you be ready to walk the walk? and use your brain in order to create solutions. And he said to me, no, I'm very creative. Don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. I'm very creative, but I don't understand where the money should come from. Like the guy is not listening. His ears are not listening to what his mouth is saying. So after I realized that they are far from getting the point, I told him and his wife, I see that it's a little bit hard to explain to you the details of such a complex picture, but if you like, you can follow me and I will be the director of the project and you just follow my instructions until the vision manifests. However, if you still want to sit around a round table where all of us are equal in making decisions, you must be responsible as well to create and to provide solutions and answers, not only me, they didn't like it. And then she said, no, we are all equals here. We are all equals here. There is no hierarchy. There is no director and rolling with the eyes. But still, we want to do that. So such bureaucratic artists or bureaucratic journalists who felt so confident of their creativity and though they become aware of their weakness, 
and their proportions, they still demand to be treated as equal creative decision makers. Though they realize they don't have what it takes, they don't know what their purpose is, and neither do they have a vision. Of course, there was a red light for me because I cannot afford putting myself in such a risk because though they appear sophisticated, well-dressed, bohemian, etc., they are very ignorant and unconscious, and this is dangerous for me and for my business. So I fold it politely, and I just use this story just to show how the concept of creativity has been hijacked. It has to do with facing survival challenges where one must create solutions. The welfare system, or choosing the most convenient ways, avoiding any real challenges, this means avoiding growing the muscles of creativity. By the way, pride and jealousy are also emotional challenges, so they might create creative ways, normally to hurt the other creative person, because the comfortable, jealous, and proud cannot be as creative. So he or she can create creative ways to cause destruction, though the subject that triggers their jealousy is not a survival threat, but he's seen as one from the point of view of the jealous. This is why creativity that is motivated by jealousy and hubris is not close to the creativity created by survival challenges. Now, there are some people who block their own creativity, either by jealousy and pride, or by ignorance in the sense of buying into misconceptions, or perhaps they believe those stories about the bureaucratic artists that they are really successful and inspiring just because the public relations say that and just because the media says that, while their friends and families in the politics actually own the media and they tell stories in the media about their sons and daughters that they are geniuses and creative and they work in the theatre, but they are connected with the politics. So you cannot take those the stories of those artists seriously. They are part of a bigger scheme. Or perhaps some know what they need to do, but they compromise essential traits for convenience. So, in order to get more creative, we need to find where we are. Thank you, Yorana, for your comment. Thank you, everyone, for staying with me. I'm Shredi Jabarin. Ciao.